All right, in the previous PowerPoint, we talked about representing forces. How are we going to represent forces? Arrows. With arrows. That's right. Now, um, we're first going to talk about systems in equilibrium. Okay, basically these diagrams at equilibrium. What does equilibrium mean? Balance. Balance. What's in balance? Yes. Equal balance. What is an equal balance? The force. Nathan, the forces. Yes, our forces are in balance, which means what about our net force? It's zero. It's zero. Okay. So if our net force equals zero, what else can we conclude about that? It's not moving. There's no motion. Okay. So draw this little mantle here with the little eye hooks, and we're going to We're going to draw a few examples. And then label them with our forces. So our first diagram, we have a mass of 5 kilograms. Now, using your information from yesterday, what can we say the weight is being applied to that eye hook? Chris, what do you think? 50 newtons. How did you get 50 newtons? By multiplying by Earth's gravity. Fantastic. Which is 10. So we are going to say there are 50 newtons applied to that eye hook. And I'm drawing that arrow to represent that 50 newtons. So this is going to be our baseline. The length of that arrow is going to be 50, equal to 50 newtons. But Why is the arrow not coming down like it is Because we are, because when I ask the question, I ask how much force is being applied to the eye hook. Okay, so the block is applying force, whichever direction the arrow is going. That yes. Okay, our second diagram. Our same five kilograms, but we are now connected with two wires. What are we going to say for the left one, Nathan? Um, it would be 25, 25 newtons. 25 newtons, that's right. And as would the right one be. What would we do as far as the arrows go? Right. Um, they would have an arrow pointing at both of the hooks. Okay, how long? What do you guys think? If these are scalable, Half the length. Half the length. That's right. So, if we are saying that our baseline arrow, our 50 newton arrow, is the length of the string here, then our 25 newton arrow has to be half that length. So, if we're going to hang a heavy object, say a mirror, It would be better to hang it with from two points, right, than just one point. So you can share the load of that mirror. All right, next up. Same five kilograms. Same 50 newtons, but now it is distributed differently. So how are we going to say, or how are we going to label, more importantly, what are we going to label our lines with now, with this diagram? 
What about what are we gonna say about the left one? Seven. Okay, it's holding more. So the arrow is bigger. Okay, so the arrow's bigger, so what mathematical symbol can we use? Greater than. Greater than, yeah. Greater than, right? So we can say it's greater than what? It's greater than twenty-five. And the right one's gonna be less, less than twenty-five. Because we don't know for sure exactly what those are. Um, we could figure that out through trigonometry. But we're not going to get bogged down with that. We just want some generalities. And also, we don't want to say, oh, one is 30, the other one's 20. Okay, we don't know that for sure. So we're just going to say less than a grade. Okay, and our final example is this. What is the force on the left side going to be? Nathan? Zero newtons. Okay, so it's slack, so it's going to be zero newtons. Now, you know, technically we could say, oh, well, there's the weight of the string, right? But that's negligible. So we're not even going to count that. So the right side is going to still, just like the first example, carry the full burden of 50 newtons. All right, now, when we actually draw these diagrams, we also need to label what type of forces they represent. Okay, so we need to talk about what the force categories are. What type of forces are there? Well, there's... What did we deal with yesterday? Weight, force of weight. We have a whole myriad of other forces. Gravity. Which we're going to talk about. Well, force of weight is due to gravity, right? All right, so talk about force categories. Our first one is our force of weight, which is due to gravity. Now, an Earth force, you take whatever our mass is, multiply it by 10. What direction is that force going to be, that force arrow going to be drawn? Downward. Downward, right. Gravity is pulling you down, right? So okay. that arrow, force of weight, is always going to be going down towards the center of the earth. So right now as you're sitting in your chair, there's a force of weight arrow pushing down against the chair, right? So why are you not falling through the chair? Nathan? Because the chair's legs are going to support the weight and gravity. Okay. So the chair is pushing back, right? With that same amount of force. Anyone know what that force is called? If you haven't heard it before, didn't you? It's called the normal force. <laughs> and you probably haven't heard that before. Guys, okay, so the normal force is what is opposing your force of weight. And that normal force is going to be perpendicular to the surface that the force of weight is pushing out. Now, the normal force is perpendicular. Does that mean it is always vertical? No. no. Wait. So which direction is the force of weight going? Down. Going down. So which way is the normal force going to be going? So up. Okay. So is the normal force always going to be vertical? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So perhaps the force of weight isn't the only thing. Only force that the normal force is pushing against. That's good stuff. So what happens if I'm pushing against this wall? The wall is pushing back. Wall is pushing back. So what is that force going to be pushing back? And which force is that? The normal force, right? So in this case, the normal force is horizontal, right? It's not vertical. But it is opposing a pushing force and not the force of weight. All right, next up. Actually, before that, let's uh, look at this diagram. Of course. We have a green cylinder. Maybe it's a can of peas. Yeah. Can of peas are different. Maybe they're a can of mashed peas. It looks like that. That color. Yeah. Um. If I'm going to draw my force of weight arrow, what direction? Force of weight arrow. Down. Down. So if I draw my normal force, that's going to be up, opposing it, or else that can of peas would fall through the table, right? Now, when I draw that normal force, what do I need to do to make sure that corresponds to this force of weight arrow? It should be the same size, right? Okay, so that's force weight and normal force. Let's go back to pushing an object. Now, I'm pushing against a wall. When I was in that earlier, the wall wasn't there. Um, if we were to push this can across the table, what force was going to, would oppose it? Friction. Friction, that's right. Anytime objects are touching each other and moving, Actually, even when they're not moving, there is a friction force. Now, which direction is the friction force going to go? Uh, for, um, horizontally, where the object is. Okay. More importantly, it's going to go opposite direction of the motion. At which direction they're being pushed or pulled. Because this is an opposition force. It is opposing motion. It doesn't want this thing to move. What is the um, result of friction? Heat. And yeah. You take kinetic energy and two objects rub against each other and motion happens. That kinetic energy is converted to heat, depending on how efficient the object is. Eventually, all that kinetic energy is converted to heat, and it's no longer moving. So, if I push this, if I were to draw arrows for push and friction on here, what do I need to make sure happens? The heat. If I have a push arrow and a friction arrow, what do I need to make sure? What happens if they're the same size? That's what I want. Then it's not going to move. What do I need to make sure? The friction needs to be smaller. The push needs to be larger for there to be motion, right? If the friction's larger or if they are the same, then there's not going to be any motion. This is the friction. You will not have overcome that friction. Yes? Can we draw this one too? Now, the force that is pushing this, um, its sister force is going to be pulling, right? Mm -hmm. So, pushing and pulling is our next series of forces.
half push and half pull. Those are pretty self-explanatory, right? Of course, any time that you have a push or a pull, you also need to have a friction force if you're going to have a complete drawing. It depends on how heavy the object is, and it's also going to be different what type of material you're moving across, right? If you're moving across gravel versus a glass surface, you know, a totally different friction experience. Yes? So, the way you calculate friction would be a surface area, right? That is one variable, yes. What would the other factors? Types of material? So there's like a chart that gives a specific amount. Yes. We won't delve into actually calculating friction very much. We'll just kind of, we will just consider it there for our, for our means. Next up, tension force. If we have objects hanging or a string or a rope or whatever, pendulum. Would be an example. Or our beginning five kilogram masses. That will be a tension force. And this goes back to what Claire was asking. The arrow points towards. Um, it's attachment, like it's place of attachment. So it goes away from the object itself. Will you have a normal force with tension force? No. This is not sitting on an object, right? It's not touching another object. It's not touching the surface of anything. So there will be no normal force. Um, air resistance. Will there be a normal force with air resistance? No, because it's just flying through the air, right? If we have a guy um, in parachute coming down, right? We have the force of weight coming down and the force of air pushing up on the parachute so he doesn't fly like a stone. To the ground, is death. So there's no air resistance with air, or, or pardon me, there's no normal force with air resistance either. It's probably important that you make note of that. No normal force for air resistance or for tension force. Now, if you take all these forces together and add them, what would that be? Take all your forces and add them together, what would that be? What would that equal? A lot of force. Okay, which would equal what? What do we say about equilibrium? Okay, because what? There's no motion because what? The net force was zero. So if we add up all of our forces, what is that going to equal? Zero. No. What type of force? Net force. Thank you. Bring it too difficult, right? You add all our net all our forces together, that's gonna to equal our net force. In our equation,
or net force is just that. What is that symbol? Sigma, which means what? In math, just means the sum. Remind me tomorrow, we need to start with our sum of forces. Sum of forces. Sum of forces. Sum of forces. forces. Um, all glues put up, right? 